a warm welcome to Festo session at Achima Puls. And with warm, I mean warm. We have around about 30 degrees here in the studio. Hopefully it's also summer <laughs> wherever you are. My name is Dorothy Gelmar. Thanks for tuning in. If you ever wondered what's the best way to get on your assets data for maintenance and for uh, optimization purposes, then NOAA could be the question, uh, the answer. <laughs> it could be the answer, it could be the solution. Mensch, Christian, <laughs> we're, uh, it's, it's very hot in here. We want to focus on that topic now and we want your questions, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I wanted to say. Interact with us. If you have questions, please post them via the chat function and I will pass them over to Dr. Christian Bart. Hello, Christian. Hi, Doro. Thanks a lot for the warm welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Question is the key. Let's go. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm very thrilled to speak today about one of the most important topics of no, uh, process industries these days, the Namur Open Architecture, in short, NOAA. So we all know a digitalized plant has a huge potential to uh, generate added value, being it by uh, data analytics or AI for used for process optimization, or just by a very close monitoring and management of your assets, leading to higher uptimes and higher availability of your plant. But no matter what you do, the foundation of all this is a solid set of data. And that's what NOAA is all about. So NOAA is a concept being developed uh, in collaboration with the NAMUR, the Association of Users of Automation Technology in Process Industries, and the ZVI, the German Association of Electric Industries, so the provider of um, uh, automation equipment. And that's a very fruitful combination because the first know exactly what the market needs, what the end customer needs, and the latter know exactly what is technically possible. So the results developed in this collaboration are both much needed and very feasible. And on top of that, you don't have any vendor lock-in since the collaborative effort among very v many vendors of the automation technology. So let's have a look at the key aspects of NOAA. I brought a couple of slides. Here's the first one. So um, here you see on the right-hand side the official NAMUR uh, logo of NOAA, where you have the gray uh, rectangular on the right-hand side, which stands for the established automation pyramid. So the core process control. And as, as you can see, this is then attached or extended with an another second channel, we call it. So the NAMO Open Architecture Domain or NOAA Domain, where the data is then um, computed, transported, and uh, used in the um, optimization um, applications. And the separation of the two, uh, so the um, core process control and the um, data computation domain is uh, a very important aspect of NOAA, and it makes sense, because one reason for the separation is the changes you need to apply to your core process control are very little, because it's uh, sticking to what is established already. This is makes it very uh, compatible for um, brownfield applications, so existing plants, which is the explicit target of NOAA. And another reason is that uh, using or dealing with large amounts of data is just cheaper in an IT uh, environment you're having in this red domain compared to the OT equipment you usually uh, have in your uh, core process control area. The second important aspect of NOAA is uh, vendor independent data modeling, so a common language of your assets. So that's very important and it means that a s given class of assets needs to provide a, s a standardized specific set of data in a specific way so that you can easily compare the position of data of uh, one uh, provider of automation technology with another one. So because you have usually in your plant assets from many different vendors and you want to compare them all in a unique uh, centralized view and this brings really your asset management to the next level. And the third important aspect of NOAA is the uh, security considerations. So one thing is crystal clear, and it's a uh, high risk actually. So as soon as you have a, no, no matter how fancy your digitalization approach is in your plant, as soon as you compromise the security of your plant, there was nothing. So a very careful and thorough consideration of the security aspects and security measures you want to implement when using digitalization techniques is really a key. And um, that's also why the security uh, working group has been uh, performed at the beginning from the conceptualization of the NOAA um, concept. And it's an integral part of the NOAA concept. Okay, let's uh, continue with the information model, some more insights on it. So I already mentioned that uh, each device needs to have a specific set of data. So it defines which data needs to be provided, but it goes beyond that. Because um, even though the different devices might offer the same data, it might not be clearly labeled or even the um, 
um, the type of data is different here. And in our examples is apply voltage, one uh, producer is calling it nominal voltage, another operation voltage, the third supply voltage, one has even a different uh, a unit in it with a, with a frequency attached to it. So uh, in order to make it really uh, crystal clear which data means what, um, is um, a semantic of your data important? And the semantic approach we use here is a common data dictionary, which is an IEC standardized uh, metadata registry. And there, uh, each reading in NOAA comes with this CDD key here on the right-hand side, and you can look it up in this uh, registry what's the specific meaning of this particular reading. And then you can really compare apples with apples. And uh, on top of that, you have also the unit uh, on and the data type of your data, so if you need to uh, do some conversions, you can easily envisage them. And these two aspects uh, together make really your uh, asset data comparable with each other very, very nicely. And uh, the technical implementation of this is done in the PADIM, so the Process Automation Device Information Model, which is an OPC UA companion specification, so the communication upstream, so to the your maintenance and optimization domain is handled via OPC UA, and the technicalities are specified there. Okay. Um, now let me come to use cases. So I mentioned that the data each class of assets needs to be provided is uh, specified, and the specification is done based on use cases. So uh, in at NOAA, we value uh, small, very well-defined data sets over broad data sets with no specific purpose of the data. So every data you read out with NOAA has to fulfill a specific purpose and a use case. And uh, there are a couple of use cases. I brought here three examples, one being the device exchange. Uh, so in order you want to exchange a device, and uh, so all the information which is needed to change the device and to have the explicit 100% correct configuration of your device is part of the NOAA information model. And this is not only configuration parameter, but uh, vendor, uh, type, uh, firmware version, software revision, and so on and so forth, up to the very detail, so that you can be 100% sure when you exchange a device that the configuration is uh, properly. And you can obviously configure it before you're doing your exchange. Another important uh, use case is the device health, because you always want to be uh, have a clear picture of the status of all your devices in your in your plant. And here we stick to the NE107, also a Namur recommendation for the uh, for a mechanism displaying the health of assets. Uh, basically, if the asset is uh, in good shape, if there is maintenance needed, if it's a manual mode, and so on and so forth. So this specification is also part of the information model. And then the third example I brought here is a quite exciting one. Um, where you have additional process variables, because most of the assets these days are measuring a lot more than what they actually uh, provide for your core process control. For example, if you uh, think about a uh, flow meter or a positioner, they measure the temperature of your, uh, of your process. And this can be very useful and can be used for process analytics and to complete your picture of your process. And um, the best thing about this, this can be provided uh, via NOAA and then uh, is available for free. Um, so you don't need any additional instruments, but you use more of the of the data you have already in your field efficiently. So that's a very nice approach. Okay, then a few more words on the security concepts of NOAA. So one aspect of the security is the separation of your core process control and your maintenance and optimization domain. So this I mentioned already earlier. And in order to make the uh, zoning work, you need to implement a barrier between the two domains. So any communication path between the core process control and the maintenance and optimization domain needs to be specifically secured. And uh, the, the main path is the readout of your core process control data, and this is handled by our, um, a NOAA security gateway, as we call it in the working group, or uh, commonly it's also called data diet, because it's, it's functioning like a diet that you have uh, only uh, um, uh, unidirectional communication coming fr out from the field into your maintenance and optimization domains, but no reaction whatsoever from the IT domain into your core process control. And an example application how this could be implemented is here on the upper right of this slide, where you see uh, we have a three module uh, type uh, component, with the module one being um, uh, having a bidirectional communication interface to your core process control where you can also actively pull data, which is required actually. And then you have an uh, intermediate module, module two, which is not configurable and is just getting the data from module one and putting it into module three. And the module three then again has a bidirectional communication interface providing the data of the NOAA information model via OPC OA to your M&O applications. 
And this is actually also needed for OPC UA, a client server implementation, as we know. And then there are also additional uh, security requirements uh, following the established uh, standards. Uh, we oriented on the 62443 IEC norm for that. And there is a specific verification process you need to undergo when you want to feedback insights from your IT domain back to your core process control. Okay, now I talked a lot about uh, theoretical aspects of NOAA, and I want to give you a short example how this could be then uh, used in your plant. And uh, I will give the example of uh, one of our products here, which is just CMSH, which is a positioner, which can communicate via heart. And uh, it's here attached to this heart module here, and uh, with a remote I.O. and then integrated, uh, here's the heart module, and uh, the remote I.O., and then integrate it into some central uh, control system. And how we want to integrate this, so we use a very commonly approach, which is uh, FDI, so field device integration, and this brings me to my last slide, actually. Um, and there's an integration example of uh, how a positioning device uh, could be integrated in your in a NOAA asset system. Um, so the, F the, the positioner comes with the FDI, and part of the FDI is the EDD, the electronic device description. And in this electronic device description, we have a list of all the NOAA information model parameters along with their uh, respective hard commands, so the way how to query them from the device. And then uh, a suitable NOAA security gateway can be automatically configured with this information to get your data from the field and provide it to your MNO domains. And the good thing is that even um, stepwise digitalization of your plant is possible with NOAA, so you don't need to digitalize your entire assets. You may, may start with just your most important one and uh, go then stepwise and integrate more and more of your, of your assets to, uh, to you, uh, digitalize your plant entirely in the end, but also only uh, single assets which are added to NOAA uh, bring benefit to your plant. And this brings me already to the end of my presentation. Um, I hope uh, I made you curious about more uh, information about the NOAA concept. Um, and um, thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer your questions now. I'm sure you did. You made us curious. Don't you agree, ladies and gentlemen? And thank you for your questions. It's one, maybe we have uh, three minutes to go. Maybe somebody says, okay, I take the chance. I pose more questions, so send them uh, via the chat function. The first question is, can I buy NOAA products already today? And is it going to be an international standard? Thanks, Michael, for that question. Okay, so this is actually already already two questions in one, let's yeah, say. That's <laughs> that right. Let's start with the first one. Can I buy NOAA products today? Yes, you can, for example, buy our um, uh, super nice positioner here. So uh, we have a demonstrator plant in uh, Frankfurt Höchst where the collaborators of um, NOAA uh, have, basically all of them, have equipment which is NOAA compliant and provides NOAA compliant data. And um, so on, on the data side, this is already uh, there's a check mark on it. Then we are also um, working right now on a demonstrator for all the security aspects because this is a little bit of a more crucial uh, path. And al also there, we have already products available which uh, allow a fully uh, NOAA compliant um, um, and secure readout of your data. And mm -hmm. the Nomura recommendations here are n uh, 175, 176, 177. Um, and so the answer is yes, there are already NOAA products, but we're working also on making it even easier for the end customer to, to facilitate and to use it, like with approaches like uh, I mentioned here with the EDD, so that you don't have to do anything manual, but just plug it in and uh, get your, um, get your uh, device working in NOAA. And the second question was again? The second was, uh, is it going to be an international standard? Ah, no, it's not going to be an international standard. Uh, at, at least not uh, it's not planned as of now. So we are we are uh, using international standards like the CDD I mentioned, uh, security standards are used, the uh, 62443, um, OPC UA. So we use standard standardized uh, approaches, but the um, NOAA approach is only a recommendation, a Namur recommendation, and the Namur recommendations I mentioned earlier. So. As of now, no plans for international standards. All right. Christian, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. If you want more details, if you have more questions, please check out our company profile here at Achama Pulse. There you can find all contact information of Christian Bard and also of all other colleagues around the globe uh, answering all the questions you may have. Hopefully, see you in the next session, which will start at 
four. So half an hour to go. See you there and thank you for your attention. Bye bye.